head over to losingmymind.com to check out our latest song, Genocide. Support our work. Now, onto the show. I, I think, I think this is also an argument for why DeSantis could be a better candidate than Trump, because I think that sometimes mm-hmm. people go to vote against Trump. <clears throat> That's yeah, true. we were, uh, we, that qu- conversation about Trump and uh, going head to head with DeSantis earlier made me nervous because, and you actually brought up his, the way he let the pharmaceutical industry take over the COVID narrative, rushed this experimental vaccine through, gave Fauci the podium and like carte blanche is really concerning to me. I, I, he did the opposite of what DeSantis stood behind. And DeSantis stood behind a record of not going into any of this bull crap. And I think that's going to be the biggest difference. DeSantis is like Trump without NPD. Could be. Yeah. What's NPD? I, I know you disagree. Narcissistic person. I, I, I think Trump's yeah. hilarious. Like I will watch Trump for hours laughing until I cry. He's so yeah. funny. One Did, of the funniest guys I've ever seen. But I think he may have NPD, to be honest so, with you. So Rebecca Jones was running against Matt Gates. Did she really expect to beat Matt Gates? She lost. She's got a criminal trial coming up or whatever, but they, they called that. It's just like, did they really, you think you're going to beat Matt Gates? That's ridiculous. Yeah. Come on. And, and you know, I, I'll concede. Trump, absolutely hilarious. A genius he's wordsmith. A guy, he's awesome. And when he's on stage, he's a master orienter. Like, like the way he could move or, crowds. Orator. Or, orienter. <laughs> Both. <laughs> potato, potato. But, but he, he's really he, good at aligning the podium and like with yeah, the yeah, lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orienter. He's also going to go down you know, as a, he's I mean. also going to go down as a, I think yeah. we'll appreciate him more when he passes. He's going to go down as a living legend. Imagine looking at him in 300 years from now, these old speeches that he did. He's going to go down as an, a legend. Sounds like yeah. they may be calling it for Kemp. Let me see if we have any... Uh, Gerdusky's saying that Zeldin will be the first Republican to carry Staten Island in a governor's race since 2002, and Whoa. it's not even close. Brian wow. Kemp wins. Political so poll. Good. Decision Desk HDU predicts Brian Kemp has won Georgia governor. Stacey Abrams oh, lost? No. Wow, I'm <laughs> so surprised. Oh, man. Maybe she's still got but her wait, acting she, career. She, so, so here's the issue. They're calling it. How could there be a red mirage? They've called it. There's no way they uncall it. That would be insane. Well, okay. um, it could be like three o'clock in the morning and a whole truckload of votes come in. I don't know. That's so, why I, I, I said poll watchers should be sitting outside these buildings with a with a 360 view of them all night, chilling in, in lawn chairs, enjoying a bag of pork rinds. No. You know, it's funny. I have my poll watcher certificate sitting on my uh, coffee table right now. and I'm here. So. Did, did you do it before? <laughs> poll watch before? You know. I'm technically an elected committee person in Philadelphia. And so they just gave me one. But I. Had prior obligations. Oh no, Stacey Abrams, she lost. Get out of here. What were they thinking? Come DeSantis on. came out today in his victory speech and said, Florida is where woke goes to die. <laughs> so, I, 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 I again, love that. I, I, I think he's been hitting the right chords. Again, I'll be critical of him. Uh, I'm still, I'm still un, unaware and unsure of his foreign policy. But just to continue the conversation, I know you were waiting to butt in I was, to I Ian's comments there. about Big Pharma. Um, Bennett, no, I Bennett actually wins in agree Colorado. With that. They're so, calling they're calling uh, uh, Colorado for Michael Bennett over O'Day. A lot of people thought that was going to happen, so we'll see. It's it's only forty three percent reporting, but they're calling it. So they called was, it. There was a lot towards the end that I was unhappy with Trump for. One was like when he was advocating for the two thousand dollars stimulus, and the other was his push of the vaccine and lockdowns. That, yeah, he supported lockdowns. He two weeks. Lockdowns. I mean, two just, weeks to slow the spread. Uh, honestly, I I was very unhappy with that. However. The whole the whole thing seemed to like start falling apart. I remember that he had an aide that worked for him whose father died, and and he said to Trump at one point, he's like, "Not only did I lose my father, I lost my job, and you lost the presidency." Like, it was like, it was um, something they didn't under, they weren't prepared to hand like deal with. I the think. New York Times needle has for the Senate has ticked one degree to the right. Oh yeah, it's still a toss up, but now it's off center, slightly to the right. This is what's going to slowly throughout the night. It's going to slowly start going down and down and down. It's going to lean right. Very likely Republican. I hope so. Win. I hope you're right. From your lips to God's ears. Well, but at the same time, the chance of winning the House has actually gone down three points since the beginning. But we'll see. I really, it, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be weird yeah. if they lose the House but win the Senate? That's like 530, 538 said there was no chance that could happen. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. We might be up for a while until we actually find out what, what we is going on here. We should bring up some of those farm hot dogs because... 
I'm yeah. not going to stay. Do you want me to go get some? I want to. I want to talk about that. But wait, <laughs> I want to. I want to kind of continue the conversation with DeSantis here a little bit because this is the interesting conversation that I think a lot of people are interested in. Mike Cernovich just tweeted: Miami Dade Democratic stronghold. DeSantis, 2018 versus 2020. Look up those stats. Then tell me he can't win POTUS in 2024. I'm not saying he That's can't win. That's what Mike win. Cernovich uh, said. Right. I'm said, not saying right he now. can't win. I'm saying that he shouldn't be the choice. That we shouldn't rally behind him just yet. I'm not saying that I don't like DeSantis. I'm saying that we should rally behind behind Trump first. He's the one that's going to go in there. I mean, think about it. If we're talking about him having narcissistic personality disorder, he's going to go want to destroy every single enemy that he's ever had. He's going to literally go scorched earth. He, DeSantis won't be that motivated to do that, knowing that he has two terms to run. So let's have Trump first and then go for CB- DeSantis. CBS uh, News hasn't called Pennsylvania governor, but they are saying it is currently heading towards Shapiro. We see what I see. want. I want Republicans to do is take it easy for the next few years. Don't start like they're great doing at doing any super they, radical, you know, they're great at that. policies or anything like that. And then make sure that we maintain the House, the Senate, and the presidency in 2024, and this. then go <laughs> insane. Look at this. Look at this Vanity Fair cover yeah. from Beto O'Rourke. He says, "Quote: I just uh, he says I want to be in it, man. I'm just born to be in it. Apparently not. Nope. Sorry, dude. Bye bye." He's great. You're gone. Yeah, he's got to do like a really hot dance to get people on his side. Are you going to play this video? Uh, he did do it, and it's, it cost it, him. The it election. wasn't hot. That's the problem. <laughs> but I mean, he really needs to like open up some sort of rock star inside him if he wants to. Beto has, has now lost a Senate, presidential, and governorship race. Oh, man. I mean, he is. He is. A, well, that's that's three for three. That's a hat trick. He's, a, he's officially a loser. Well, well, Lin- Lin- well, you got to be careful. Lincoln was a loser, too. Lincoln won because of a split vote. That's interesting. Yeah. Big split. Four four parties. I think he had like it was four parties. thirty one percent of the vote he won or something like that. So mm-hmm. uh currently over at Reuters, it's really close. Warnock is only up by about twenty six thousand votes, twenty six thousand five hundred. It's about one point one percent with seventy two percent reporting. So we'll see, man. We've got a couple areas that look like they may go red. We'll, we'll see. We don't know for sure. It looks like some of the, uh, Atlanta and some other uh, major cities have, have, have had their results come in to a great degree, but we will see. Do you think that the Trump-DeSantis situation is actually setting up a situation where Trump de- demonizes DeSantis so much that the mainstream media gets behind DeSantis, which I think you mentioned they already are in a lot of ways, but like big money, like, is, like BlackRock oh, comes in to, to be like, anything that's going to make sure Trump fails, we want. And then they push DeSantis to the top and it's like a 5D chess move from well, Donald Trump to get the well, Ron DeSantis I, I, elected. I would, I would kind of question that a little bit because I, I do see a lot of mainstream media hit pieces on DeSantis. I see them attacking him, not just during COVID. During COVID, they said that he was going to be the butcher of Florida, that, that, it, that there was going to be a bloodbath in Florida because he didn't implement any restrictions or any kind of larger mask mandates. That obviously didn't happen, but the attacks still continue. And, and I believe they're, they're persistent from what I see because I don't see any kind of mainline corporate pieces propping him up. I see I'm him fighting about, the corporate media a lot, but I don't I see... Ta- when I say the establishment, any, I'm yeah. talking about the right-wing establishment. I'm talking about okay. the McCarthy's and, and like the general... Um, the PACs and things like that. They're they're more on his side than they okay. are on Trump's side because they're sitting there saying, okay, he's the... He's the tolerable Trump. He's the one that's going to not, you know, say stupid things at rallies. And the, the problem is, though, is that that kind of behavior also can instigate riots, right? I mean, when you like, you don't look. Look, I'm on your team on this, but do you not think that the way that he handled the George Floyd situation kind of provoked a lot of what happened? No, you don't think he provoked it at all. No, you I don't. Think- you don't think there was an, any other way that he could have spoken about it that could have de-escalated the situation. No, no, they they, 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 they they set uh, anti fund Black Lives Matter went around setting fire to D.C. before the dude was even in the in office. Yeah, he didn't say enough. anything. Yeah, but like, is, they, there's there, there's. There, there's so many ways that I think that he could have de-escalated the situation, and I felt like he antagonized. Are you talking about got, Trump or DeSantis no. right now? Trump. He's talking Trump. about Trump. Dude, no I, 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 I and, feel and, like— And I understood his perspective completely, but it just, but I, but I, you know, but, but I, I, I can put myself in the head of somebody else. But see, I think the issue you're, you're lacking is—and most people watching probably understand— I think you very much overestimate the good faith of these people. Mm-hmm. They when when they went around smashing and destroying and killing people, the media lied for them and they lied for it. When Jack Posobiec got punched on the street and the cops saw it happen and walked up, this anti woman goes, nothing happened. I didn't see anything. They just outright are lying. These are these are not people. You can't come out and be like, we're going to try and appease. You. I mean, look at Twitter right now. 
Elon Musk went to these woke groups. We got pissed about it. And he said, I'm going to work with you. They did not care. They came out in the press the next day and said, he is a bad person making everything worse. Mm -hmm. And then he tweeted, I went to them and told them we're doing what you want. And they're still attacking me. There's nothing you can so, say to an angry mob that mm. just wants Okay, so so power. In, in the protests, what percentage would you say would be far leftists and what percentage would you say would be mainstream people? In like the so which which protests specifically like BLM? Um yeah, like, like the George like Floyd during riots. those riots. The what George what percentage of people were kind of mainstream that that genuinely Nin believe they're ninety percent. Wait a minute. Mainstream. No, no, ninety percent no, no. of the people smashing windows mm -hmm. and burning things down were, were mainstream normal people who were not politically uh, involved. Mm -hmm. So was there so with the people that are extreme, I agree with you completely. But was there any way to deescalate no. it with the average mainstream person? Yeah, yeah, sure, the you National said. Guard, like, like, the National Guard and the military. I had so many regular friends. That were like, we got to get out there. We got to help. And help I what? what? Like by smashing they, windows? And they, but you're thinking they about. They believe that. You're thinking about right. mainstream political they're, people. They're, there were mm. people that were didn't care about politics at all and just wanted to steal stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like they were just sure. opportunistic. But what, but what percentage yeah. of those people that were out there would you say are like that or far leftists? And what so, percentage so were mainstream listen, people that could have been convinced? No, no, no. The far leftists make up between like 8 and 12% mm. of politics right now, of the mm. country. Yeah. Most people who go out were frustrated with the lockdowns and weren't outside for months. A lot of people who, uh, conservatives tend to live in, in suburban and rural areas. So for us, like I remember Ian's making fires in the fire pit in the backyard during lockdowns. We go back out in the patio where we can skate, where we have our backyard. It's a half acre, not very big, but we're chilling outside. We have some burgers, we grill or whatever. For people in New York City, you couldn't leave your, your, your studio apartment. You're literally, some people have no windows. Their windows look at brick walls. They're locked in. Okay, but when the riot started, they just said, I'm outside. I don't care. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.